pick there, that's Bria. She's, uh, she was at that time nine years old and she uses an eye gaze system for communication. Um, I've got my right hand on Harley, my dog, um, who comes to blue sky every chance he gets. And that's me. Um, going to, pa I packed the presentation full of um, user stories and stuff. So you'll meet Bria again. The thing that I want to get across is the fact that a person can really do more if they can move that mount that's attaching whatever to their wheelchair and they can get much, much greater independence with the movable mount. Here's the plan today. Uh, we're going to, I've got it into three, four sections. Uh, the first focus, focuses on the benefits of movable mount. It talks a little about static mounts and ju medical justification. Uh, the next section will go in depth into the different mounts. Uh, we won't be covering all of our accessory items here, but you'll have the information as to how to get to the website. Uh, next, we'll go through what I see as a step-by-step -step process to um, selecting the right hardware, attaching it to your wheelchair, and setting up the mount. And uh, then we'll go into some kind of fun case studies and close it out. Our training today, by the end of the training, you guys will be able to identify four different types of movable mounts, our mounts, and discuss when you might like a locking or a non-locking mount. Uh, you'll be able to list the four main components of a mounting system, uh, three medical justifications for recommending a mount that moves, four potential funding sources, and two reimbursement codes. And you can describe three candidates that would be great for a powered mount. I've been in the field of assistive technology and rehab engineering since 1984 when I went back for my master's degree in biomedical engineering and rehab engineering. I worked for about six years uh, clinically and in the community providing job accommodations and working with the teams at Gillette and Tamarack that worked on augmentative communication and powered mobility. So I did a lot of mounting in my person-to-person -person work that I did and custom mounting and working with commercially available stuff. Then I went to AbleNet where I developed products. I developed the spec switch, which some of you might know, the alternate spinner, and this dates uh, the product, but it was a TV and VCR remote. I founded Blue Sky in 1997. 10 years later, roughly, we launched the Mountain Mover. So it's been on the market since 2008. And in 2018, 10 years again, uh, we launched the Power Mount. So I'd like you to meet the Mountain Mover family. Um, we've got four main mount types. The first is in the upper left corner, the locking mountain mover. You can set lock, memory lock positions. You can use the low effort controls um, near the device to unlock and move the mount. Uh, the tilt can be adjusted and locks in place as well. Uh, the device attaches with a quick release plate so you can do different things with your mount. And it comes in a dual arm, a single arm, and one with no arms, which we call a tilt and turner. The easy mover, um, with the easy mover, uh, the joints don't lock. Now this was developed in response to some customer requests and say uh, people found that in a place that was highly staffed, it was sometimes confusing as to everybody understanding how they could move the mount and that could lead to some damage. So we went ahead and, and just took the guts out and developed the easy mover where you can adjust the joint resistance uh, so that it makes it easier or more difficult to move. So it can be quite stable. The simple mount is just a tray on a post. We have a small one and a large one. This is the large one shown with a plate and cup on it, but a lot of people use the small one for their phones. It can tilt, rotate, and um, fold off to the side. Uh, the power mounts, the two that we have currently on the market are the hybrids. They have the, the standard mount mover arm on top, but they've either got a powered shoulder or a powered tilt. Okay, why is it important? What's the so what? Well, you can do more with a mount that moves. You can transfer to a toilet, a bed or another chair. Imagine something right in front of you and you can't move it. You can't do those things. You can see to drive. If the tilt angle is such that the device is in your face, you can move it. You can pull up to a table with others for meals, and you can do other things in your life, work, 
play exercise. Whereas static mounts, something that sits right in front of you and you can't move it, that prevents you from transferring. They separate one person from another. They can be visually obstructive if you can't change the, the position of the device at all. They keep you from pulling up to tables or sinks and doing or accessing other things. And I like to say assistive technology shouldn't be restrictive. It should be assistive. Mounts that move really do allow people to do more. They were developed so people could move their mount to do other things. The, the first two um, people that I worked with that I did a really uh, focused effort on doing a, a more movable mount uh, was one was a girl, she was 16 years old. I'm sorry, she was just about to graduate. So she was more like 17 years old. Her team really wanted her to be able to move her communication device to the left so that she could pull up to a computer workstation and have a better chance at jobs or at completing college. Um, the second kid that prompted me uh, to do another one was this eight-year-old girl whose mother and she both wanted her to be able to get out of her wheelchair, but she had a speech device in her way. So again, we made a movable mount so Chloe could transfer down to the floor and scoot around at home. But you can also do other things. You can eat at a table, you can wash your hands, drink from a fountain, you can see the movie you're watching. Um, static mounts and trays get in the way of, of really living your life in other ways. Mountain movers are accessible and movable. They are also stable and secure which is kind of, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but the accessibility comes because you can position the device just where you need it. And they're stable because the memory locks maintain you, those usable positions. The flexibility and position comes from, I can move it from right in front of me off to the side so I can still access my, my device or my iPad. Um, I can also move it away so it's more out of the way for transfers and such. And it takes very little effort um, and, and very little dexterity is required to access the controls. You can also adjust the tilt angle, say to drive or reduce the glare. The trouble with typical static wheelchair mounts, whether for speech devices or trays, is that they're immovable barriers that trap you, cut you off and limit you. You depend on help constantly. Solution, the Mountain Mover from Blue Sky. Our movable mount frees you up to do more on your own. You can easily move it aside to wash your hands, pull up to a table to eat, see to drive your chair and socialize. Multitask with multiple devices, you can position exactly where you want. Move them to study, take pictures, watch TV, exercise, hug your kids, Play with your dog and go to bed all in your own time. Stay connected even in bed. Free up family and caregivers too. It comes in manual or power versions. With Blue Skies Mountain Mover, the sky's the limit. I'd like you to meet Anthony. Anthony is um, a big proponent of the, the Mountain Mover. He uses his mounts to communicate using his, his speech device and using his iPhone. He also swaps out an iPad for his speech device from time to time. So he uses his mounts for those purposes, but he moves his mount so he can work out at the gym, so he can hold his nephew, so he can sit up to a table and, and order something at the restaurant, so he can transfer, so he can work at his computer. His job is to provide tech support to other people who use AAC devices. And he uses his phone to take pics and sometimes uh, shake the president's hand. Now, Bria, who you met in the first slide, she loves to explore. She uses her head to drive. She uses her eyes to talk and to take underwater photos. Uh, she moves her mount though, so that she can talk, so she can drive, so she can see more where she's going, so she can see her teacher and she can watch the TV, pull up to a table to eat, all those similar things, only she's using the powered mount. Here's the problem with static mounts. These are pictures of great people, good mounts that are positioning things, but they are static. They position the device well, 
but they only have a single usable position. So there's no chance for a person to move it to the side to use any other way. They're used for a single purpose. So they're used for a speech device. And so that's precious real estate right in front of you. And you need to do other things in that space, but they can't be moved independently and they impair transfers. They have to be removed for transfers. So now you can eat, but you can't talk to anybody while you're eating. You can't pull up to a table or sink yourself. It impairs your visibility. And um, whether that's for driving or just for seeing the people you're talking to, and it keeps you from doing other things. I wanna emphasize during my talk that mounts aren't just for speech devices. Even if you're an AAC user, you might use that mount for an iPad if you can. Everybody multitasks. So very often we have two mounting surfaces or somebody puts two devices on one. So one mount can serve many needs and I've listed some of the needs off to the side in terms of what you might want to um, support with your mount. It's important to me and to our end users, they've all said, uh, that they can easily change from one device to another. And Rosie really exemplifies that. She wrote a book called Four Fingers and 13 Toes. She had thalidomide, uh, her mother was taking the drug when she was in utero. So she doesn't have much in the way of limbs and dexterity, but she can use her mouth and she can use her brain. You know, she, she reads, she writes, she's a, um, a beautiful artist, you can see that, that drawing she's doing and she also paints and she loves to do photography. Uh, she got a big award from the Queen in England, she's in the UK, uh, the OBE award uh, for her service as a disability advocate. Rick is a fellow that I've known for many years. He's got, um, he's had a spinal cord injury for well over 50 years, he's over 70. He's retired, but he's not, he keeps, um, uh, he keeps showing up at the Capitol to tell people um, about accessibility issues in the Twin Cities and in Minnesota generally. He uses his mount, it's an iPad tray, but he uses it as a multi-layer iPad tray. Uh, you can watch a video of him on our homepage. He uses an iPad, sometimes he puts his laptop on top of that and, and or his phone on top of that. He also uses the Surface for eating. And he's, he uses some old fashioned Velcro to kind of make the stacks so they don't all topple off one another. But he can also be seen around in the community documenting accessibility issues with his camera. And what the statement I liked from the video from him, the interview with him, he said, it's given me a lot more independence. I didn't realize I had had that dependency until I found I could do it myself. Suze came in, she knew exactly what she wanted. Her passion is photography. And um, she had seen the mountain mover online. She came up from Iowa and uh, we attached it to her power chair and she has done some wonderful photos since then. You can see that's quite a, quite a big camera she uses. And it's really important to her that she can easily change positions um, with that so she can focus in on the birds as they fly by. The medical justifications that could be made, and we have another, a bigger list of them on our website at mountmover.com, um, are that the mount, being able to move the mount makes it possible for a person to be able to transfer. Now that has medical implications. They can transfer to a toilet, to their bed, uh, to a walker or chair. They can move it so they can see to drive. Driving is essential. Um, they can access a phone or communication device should they need to call for help. They can pull up to a table to eat or drink or position their food and drinks on a tray. Uh, they can move it aside, move the mount aside so they can wash their hands. They can perform pressure release um, or even suction themselves. You'll meet a gentleman who uses it for suctioning. And they could also exercise and stretch. And some individuals really um, who have some joint laxity and such, or arthritis, you know, they need it to be positioned just so to reduce the strain on their neck, their arms, or their torso. We asked at a conference I was presenting at uh, ATIA many years ago, 
um, I just asked the audience in general, because I knew there'd be a lot of OTs in the audience, um, if they could find any grad students to look at what the outcomes of using a mountain mover were. Because we felt like it would be much better coming from the outside and in, and, and from an OT's perspective. So they administered two different surveys. One was the psychosocial impact of assistive device survey. And what they found on the bottom line is that the positive feelings of the person had about themselves increased and the negative emotions re were reduced. So confidence, adaptability, self-esteem really increased on a scale of negative three to plus three, where plus uh, indicates that it increases. They, they scored all above a two, so between two and three on that. Um, and Likewise, they scored um, their emotions went, negative emotions went down. They also used the um, a functional activities performance measures survey called the Canadian Occupational Performance Measures. And um, what they saw there was, if you look at the performance for, before and after, that uh, they could, maybe they could do the activities before, but once they had a mount that moved, they could do them much better. And their satisfaction increased significantly as well with their performance. In terms, they selected activities or occupations that they were really important to them. So the second person that we're showing here had uh, six or seven different activities. And again, if you look at performance before and after, there's a, a big leap forward and the satisfaction showed that as well. In terms of client considerations, um, I put in bold or bigger text up there, base, the basics. What do they want to do? Where do they want to do it? What's important to them? And I, I suggest that you take a holistic view of their world and their needs and wants. Uh, very often when a person comes in for, let's say, a speech device mount, that's all that is the focus. And you don't look at how will this mount um, impact that person's life generally? What, what will it limit them from doing? Uh, transfers being one of the bigger things, you know, whether it's assisted or independent, it's just nice to be able to move the device out of the way and transfer rather than remove the, the device. I've heard too many people um, when they go into the restroom where somebody else removes one of the fixed mounts they put it in the sink or on the floor, and to me, that's just appalling. We've got something online called the Mount Mentor. It's a form that if you fill it out, we'll help you figure out just what components you need. And it gives you an idea as to the kind of questions we ask and that you might ask. Um, and we're ha happy to help you figure things out, but this might, might be helpful to you. I only pointed out it's on our support section. There are four components of our mounting systems. There's the mount, okay, and that will go through the different types. There's a post, and you can get that in different lengths. Uh, there's wheelchair attachment hardware. We've got an assortment, and uh, that includes the post bracket, which is this thing that the square post goes into, and then the wheelchair attachment hardware, which is the attachment plates that attach directly to the wheelchair. Then up on top, that's the important stuff. What do you want to access? Uh, so that's the device plate or tray. Going back to the mounts that move, we already kind of ran through this and we're going to go into them in detail. So I'm going to go in in one moment just to the, the original mount mover. But first I want to let you know, we believe in hands-on trials. If you like, uh, we have a Meet the Mount Mover program where you can have a loaner for a two-week trial, and you can extend that if you want to. Uh, we send out the parts that have been determined by you and us uh, that will satisfy your client's needs, or if they want to try the non-locking and the locking mount, we can do that. We've also got a Meet the Power Mount program. We've also got eval kits. If you, your organization or company or your school uh, wants to purchase an eval kit, have one on hand, you can do that. The locking version has um, three joints. You've got your wrist, your elbow, and your shoulder. And each of those joints has 24 potential memory lock positions. The tilt adjusts from zero degrees, which is flat, and then to slightly downward facing, which is 
105 degrees. Um, you can get fine tuning at the wrist for precise positioning for folks who use eye gaze devices. The hoop unlocks both the shoulder and elbow. The paddle unlocks the wrist. So they're very, they don't require a lot of dexterity whatsoever. The link cube, which is what attaches the mount to the post, has three attachment options. We'll show you those. The quick release plate is what attaches the device um, to the mount. To move your mount, you'll see the illustration. You, again, you depress the hoop that unlocks your shoulder and your elbow and you can move the mount. So you depress it and then move it. When you let up on the hoop, then it'll find the lock position. As long as you have your hand depressed on the hoop, it'll bypass lock positions. So you could have all the positions in lock position if you wanted to, uh, or you can have specific lock positions. If you depress the paddle and release it just this, with the one hand, uh, that'll temporarily unlock the wrist and then you can rotate it. We tried to make this so a person who uses just one hand could, could operate all functions. And so they push the paddle down and they can rotate the wrist. To change the tilt angle, there's a little lever here and when you put it to the right, it's unlocked, to the left is locked. So you put it to the right and you, you have to lift up on it. There is a, a resistance hinge in there, so it's not gonna just drop. It, uh, so it might feel like it's still left, we just need to make some effort. We have a high and a low resistance hinge. You can specify that when you order it. This is how you set the custom lock positions. So those joints have, 24 of these lock setters, um, little teeth that you can, if I put one down, this pointed part on the back of the arm, when it comes above that, it'll lock. Now you can't unlock it when it's sitting there, you have to move it to this, to out of that position and then you can unlock it, you just flip it up. When you want to, when you're doing something where you want it just so, you do what we call fine tuning the wrist. So you set the nearest lock position at the wrist and then you come in here with this and loosen the hex head bolt. And once you've loosened it like a quarter turn, you can adjust the device and rotate it plus and minus seven degrees. And then you tighten it when you get it to where you want it to be. This is just a demo. Michael works and he needs to be able to move his iPad mount off to the side so he can pull up to his workstation and use his computer. In terms of attaching devices and trays, we tried to make it quick so we can have a quick release plate. Uh, basically, this, this plate here needs to go onto the tilt plate and it locks in place. So to unlock it, you move this red lock, we call it in the upper left-hand corner there, that red tab, you move that off to the left or rotate it out. Now you can lift up the green handle. It's not green in real life, but you get the idea. And um, then you rock it forward and pull it off. To reattach it, you do the same thing, only make sure, if you look at the th third slide, that the mouse hole is on the nub there and then rock it backwards and let it um, engage in the in the lock position. Usually, if you have a speech device, there might need to be a plate, a device plate uh, that is specific to that device that gets attached, and then the quick release plate attaches to it. This device plate will have lots of threaded holes that correspond to the quick release plate holes. We also have something called a quick connect receiver. There are very many devices that have kind of a trapezoid or wedge shaped plate on the back of them uh, that Readapt has and uh, PRC devices have had forever. And so this, we made this quick connect receiver so that that could attach directly to the back of their device rather than have another plate. And so this would attach to either in the case of the easy mover, it's pre-attached to the mount but you can also attach it to a quick release plate uh, to make it compatible with that device. Locking versus non-locking, that's a good question. And we do have on our, in our support section uh, under the um, therapist section, uh, we have a, a document we've put together on 
you know, when do you want a locking versus non-locking? But these are just some points. Uh, memory positions, if you need memory positions, so it's always in the right place each time, you don't trust the team at the school or whatever, uh, maybe you want memory positions. Uh, if they push hard on a device, so it might scoot away from them uh, when they're pushing on it, uh, then again, you might want a locking mount. Or if you use a heavier device and you're gonna be tilting in space, uh, you want it to be locked in that position and not come drifting into you or away from you when you're driving down a, a curve or a ramp. You also might be more inclined to have a locking if the person uses eye gaze and drives because it might jostle out of position. In terms of when you want a non-locking mount, um, we've had one case where the user is very strong and, and their system had to come in for repairs, their locking system repairs a couple times and uh, their ATP um, wanted to know if we could have one without lock positions. We just had uh, put the easy mover on the market. So we sent them one for trial and they opted for that one. Uh, sometimes if a person has many care providers where it's hard to train everybody to use the unlock and lock controls, uh, you might want to consider it. In bed, of course, you're not going to be jostling about. Um, in bed for eye gaze might be a good time uh, to get it just so because people aren't positioned the same way each time in bed. Um, and sometimes if a person is can move it themselves and has good control when they're accessing whatever device it is, meaning they're not pushing hard against it, uh, that could be a time when you would consider it. And um, if the person likes different positions, like doesn't want to be locked in, so to speak, you might want uh, for them to have it as well. So the easy mover comes, it is the non-locking one. It's easy to use. At the movable joints, each joint, uh, you can put a tool up in there and adjust the resistance. Um, the quick connect receiver, um, some of them come with the quick connect receiver, uh, but you can also get it with the tilt plate option. And you can get dual arm and the single arm. Albert's the fellow I was talking about who's a real rough user and he, um, he's he been real happy. Really, uh, this one has not come in for repairs. Well, you know, if he had had the other one, other one for many years, so, but it, um, he really, really likes uh, this easy mover. And this was, uh, this is for a, a local person. Um, her dad was in and uh, we were talking about her system and showed him the easy mover and he fell in love with it because they have multiple attendants coming in to help position things for his daughter when she's in bed and when she's in her wheelchair. And instead of having to teach and teach and teach all the different uh, people at school or at home, um, he just decided to be, they wanted to give the easy mover with the locking tilt plate a try. The locking tilt plate is very important because of the, the angle needs to stay in place and she was using one of the heavier devices. Now Lene, you can see her moving her easy mover over to herself. She's got what we call a, a double decker. So she's got a single arm on the bottom, single arm easy mover down here, and she's got that dual arm up here. She, Because of her um, joint hypermobility, it's really important to position her laptop screen uh, up higher for less neck strain. And so then her keyboard needs to be much lower. And uh, so, and she's obviously with her interests um, as a high school student taking classes in astrobiology and chemical biosignatures, she's going to have a lot of time on the computer. The simple mount. Okay, right in the center here is Rick. He was being a fashion model when we first came out with this. He was the one you saw earlier, uh, but he um, tried the and gave us, gave us feedback on the simple mount. And um, so you can see it's very easy. I mean, let's see, Anthony uh, is here. He's got a simple mount for his phone. And this little guy has a simple mount for his phone, but he's got a single arm for his uh, laptop and for his uh, tablet. So you can combine the simples with, with other things. One thing I wanted to mention in terms of you know, benefits, uh, Anthony found his fine motor skills improved greatly since he started using his iPhone. This woman, Cindy, she uh, came in, she has MS, 
and she wanted to have a laptop tray. But she also said, you know, I need somewhere for my mouse. And her armrests just weren't uh, large enough at times to support her arms and when she got really fatigued. So she uses it not only for her mouse, but she also sometimes uses it for, um, for as, a, as an extra added arm support. You can see here in the center um, how you can fold it down alongside the chair as well. So it's nice and discreet. Nicole was a college student when her OT called and she said, I've got a student, she needs to read and use her laptop at the same time because she's in college. Um, Nicole came in and she's like, wow, and I can eat on it and I can write. And so she swaps things out. She came back in for this little photo shoot and she, she told us everything she could do and it's great. Her dad said that he wished uh, they had had it in high school because they, they had to rig up all sorts of things when she was in school. So I'll, as soon as we came out with the mountain mover, um, the OTs started calling us and talking to us at conferences saying, we need a power mount. Uh, this is great for kids with CP or for my folks with um, spinal cord injury, but it doesn't satisfy my people with ALS or MD. We want them to be able to move their own mount too. And so, when you think about a power mount, uh, who might move it? Uh, folks with limited or no upper extremity use, um, but they want to be independent um, or they need to be independent, like they're going to college. Um, control options right now are accessible switches uh, used in conjunction, in combination with an app. Um, the hybrid systems don't need the app. The modes of operation, you can go between target positions or you can adjust one joint at a time. Um, in the multi-joint system. Um, I'll describe more about the systems uh, as we go through them. Okay, first off, you know, it might be any of these folks, uh, people with ALS, MD, SMA, CP, spinal cord injury, and MS uh, might benefit from something like this. This is one of the systems we currently have on the market. This is the, the hybrid system that has the power shoulder. And it can be operated with one or two switches. Uh, basically, it's however you put, which switch jack you put in. If I put it in the left switch jack uh, on this, this end cap right here, then um, it'll alternate directions. So I press and hold, it moves one way. I release it, it stops. I press and hold, it moves the other way. Or you can have it go between two custom target positions with the one switch. So you tap it and it goes to position one and then you tap it again, it goes to position two, or you can stop anywhere between those positions, or you can have one switch be for one direction, one for the other. S Scott has moved, has used his hybrid shoulder now for three years or so. And this was great. It was like we were showing the, um, let's see, we showed the power mount at a, a prototype at Resna one year. And the therapist came to me and she said, when can I get one of those? And I said, I'm sorry, we just have prototypes right now. And she said, well, I have a fellow who needs one right now. <laughs> and she described the situation. Scott has SMA. He loves computer games. Um, he has um, like four to five hours a day, a couple stints like that, uh, where there's nobody with him. And uh, he can't really swallow his saliva. And his aides were suctioning him. Uh, so he was constantly going to the hospital for respiratory issues and suggested to his home health person uh, that coordinated his cares that if he had something that could move his suction tube to him and then he could operate a switch to turn on his suction machine, he could do it. So I worked with the therapist. Luckily, they were um, from Minnesota, from Rochester, the Mayo Clinic, and he lived not far from there. So uh, we had a Skype session with Scott where we talked about the options and um, then uh, I went down and, and met up with the therapist at his home and installed this and he has been using it nonstop every day. The nice thing is now when he's gaming he can talk to the others in his um, to his buddies that he's playing with. The power, powered uh, tilt. This is fun. I just 
we just keep discovering ways in which people want to use things that we never thought about. Okay, so Matt uh, and his father Mike uh, come along and they say, oh, we want the power tilt. We want the power tilt. They came upon us at closing the gap. And the reason he wanted it was because Matt is really into photography and was taking a photography class. And with his uh, one switch, he accesses his speech device. And within his speech device, he has a program to do photography. And so he um, he's using a second head switch now uh, to operate the tilt so that he can get his, he can put his uh, device, or I mean, sorry, I'm sorry. So he can take a picture of the person, not the floor in front of the person. And this was, I went to the exhibit that um, his class had, and this is a picture of Matt um, during class, kind of taking, you know, seeing what's in front of him, maybe taking a picture. And these are a couple of his photos. Awesome. Then we have a power joint, uh, which comes this, now you get a clear view of the power pack. I'll talk about that in a minute. But um, basically you have this power joint and there are four threaded holes and you can attach what you want to it. So I kind of rigged this up in our shop and I used one of our posts and a couple of those clips I found at the hardware store um, to put the suction tube in there. So uh, Scott could have a system on the go without having it be a hybrid shoulder. He could just use the hybrid, um, or not the hybrid, but the power joint itself. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is my new mountain mover. I'm going to move it out of the way now. Shane has spinal muscular atrophy as well, and Shane has a video blog of over 500,000 follow followers. It's called Squirmy and Grubs, and you guys should really check it out. It's very fun. Uh, but as you see, um, he really wanted to move his joystick and was reliant on others to move it out of the way. And he has written three books, um, and he does this blog, so he needs to be constantly in touch with folks. Um, and at his computer. But once somebody moved his joystick out of the way, it used to be just kind of a fold away one, um, his fiance moved it out of the way and then she'd go off and do what she needed to do. Though. She was a college student studying for finals. Uh, so he was stranded until she came back, uh, but not anymore. Now he can sneak up on her. Okay, this is the kind of the hub, the power pack. Um, you. You plug your switches in, there's uh, two switch jacks, and then there's a, this is where the cable that goes to the power mount goes, and this is the, the um, charging jack right there. I have already described this somewhat, but it does include a, there's a built-in 12 volt lead acid battery right now, and uh, we don't have the specifics on, on wheelchair battery connections yet, but we're working with uh, adaptive switch labs on that. Okay, coming in 2020, as I said earlier, um, maybe this was before everybody was online, uh, we'll have a multi-joint power mount. Now, um, we're still in the process of, we just revamped um, all the circuit boards and we're testing that and it's looking awesome. Um, basically, you can operate it with a switch. At this time, we're just doing the Android app, starting up with that, making sure it works well, then we'll go to the iOS as well. Uh, it has up to five degrees of freedom, shoulder, elbow, wrist, tilt, and rotate. Uh, you can program target positions, groups of up to six positions for up to five devices, and you can adjust joints individually. 
So here are the main screens on the app. You've got target positions that so you can move quickly to favorite positions. Uh, you can adjust joints and you can have groups of target positions. So if you use it for multiple devices, obviously uh, where you have a camera would be different than when you, where you have your speech device. And so you can change that. And that's about all I'm gonna tell you about that. Here's, here's an example of what those target positions might look like. Uh, you might have one in front of you for using it, then off to the side uh, for communicating um, while you're sitting at a table and then way back for a transfer. We're also developing this cool technology. It's called, we call it auto positioning. We call it auto actually, O-T-T-O. And what this is meant to do, this is a research project we're working with NIH on, um, is to auto position the device if a person loses contact. Uh, very often people who, who use eye gaze, say somebody with ALS, might shift in their position in their chair or their bed. And once that happens, they may not be able to access their speech device or their computer, uh, whatever it is they're using eye gaze for. If that happens, um, then they lose access. And here's a picture of Gay. She's just, uh, she was the very first mountain mover ever and she user ever. And there I am walking to my station. Now I'm going to go through uh, the eight steps that you'll want to take to, it's a step-by-step -step process to select, attach, and set up your mount. Um, this is more about um, kind of a guide um, for those who are putting a system on, on a chair. Okay. And we've got a step-by-step -step process on our website. Each of the pages within that step-by-step uh, -step process have a lot of video and graphics. Uh, to help you through the process. So step one can seem overwhelming, and I put this slide on there because it's overwhelming. Uh, you don't know what to choose for your chair. And the cool thing, what we've done is we've got, through that step one process, a drop-down menu where you can choose your chair, and then it'll come up with pictures of your chair or that chair type, and how you might attach to it. It'll tell you which components you need and it'll describe, it'll have a series of photos showing it um, having been attached. This one also has, it seems, another approach. So I'm not quite sure what that is, but uh, the nice thing is you can see exactly what you need for your chair. So then you wanna look at where do we attach it? And that can only be answered by asking other questions. You know, how are they going to access their device, eye gaze with their hands? Uh, where do they need the, the device when they access it? So that determines kind of where the post needs to be, uh, the post being this upright square tube. By the way, we do square and square so it doesn't rotate and squirrel away from you. Um, so you also need to know if you want it to tilt with the wheelchair, then you want to attach to like say the seat frame. Um, but if the person needs access when they're sitting and standing like Tana does here, um, she's got it attached to the armrest of the chair. So as she stands, uh, her device comes with her. You can see what she can use it from either a seated or a standing position. Or she and she can move the device to the side when she wants to drive or wants to watch her teacher um, or whatever. So, um, so that's just one consideration. Do they want to sit or stand? If they use a second mobility device, you might want to get a second uh, uh, second set of hardware to attach so that you get one of those wheelchair brackets, the post bracket onto their walker, let's say. You can still use the same mount from a manual chair to a power chair. You just might have a different set of lock positions. There are other considerations. There are armrests and so on. So you have to avoid certain things. You have to think, okay, the footrest needs to be removed. Well, let's make sure this isn't in the way of that. Um, I transfer to the left. Well, let's mount to the right uh, and so on. I'm going to just show you three different types uh, with step three, attaching the hardware to the frame. And uh, I'll leave it at that, but there are 
uh, on that page, there are many examples of attaching uh, to various chairs. For the round, uh, for those chairs with round tubes, uh, we do have one inch and seven eighth inch uh, tube clamps. So you can use that if you can find a nice stretch of, of space for those for a two inch piece. Um, but if you think you'll attach to the horizontal tube, please don't. Uh, it'll just squirrel away. I mean, you know, the clamps are only but so good and um, generally, and things just move away and out of the way. This is a, a solution we came up with, was do bridge clamps. So basically we have two half clamps, and then we use a plate to bridge those two. So we have one clamp on the horizontal and one on the vertical, and that really seems to keep things from rotating away. The, um, Here's another uh, solution, and this is for the Quantum or the Invacare, Amy systems, uh, basically putting a T-nut in there. And then you could attach the post bracket directly to that T-nut, or you might have to move it, up, move it away with what we call offsets, uh, which are plates and things that can move, uh, move it to different positions. Uh, we do supply all the nuts and bolts you'll need. This is a um, the permobile, which is real easy to attach to. They have that nice unitrack, and both permobile and quantum have um, the same track system underneath their armrests, as you see on their seat systems. In this diagram here, the orange circles are those that are threaded. So we have threaded holes on your adapter plates, and that's what you attach the wheelchair or post bracket to. One of the things we like to recommend is people attach it so the post is vertical. So you take gravity out of, this, out of the situation to make it easier for a person to move their mount. And so we have this angle adjust plate, which allows you to align the bracket, the post bracket in every, I guess you get every seven and a half degrees of adjustability there. And um, just by how you uh, flip the plates and, and how you orient the, the post bracket. The post bracket, you can take the back plate off of it and um, you can position it in different ways. If you'll notice here, this one, um, you've got it going vertically, hanging, whereas over here, you've got it laterally. Um, so that's just a function of how you attach the plate. Okay, this is a um, kind of about the post. Now, because you have memory positions and you want them to align in the right way every time, uh, we made it so that you can only put the post in with the slot aligned with the slot of the post bracket. Now, some people have been known to jam it in there and get stuck, but uh, there is a little nub on the tip of the post that is supposed to prevent that. Um, as you saw to the, in the video to the right, you can also set um, the height adjust screw. This is a height adjust screw. You set that so it always comes back to the same height. And this is a, just a nice graphic for showing you um, how to figure out how long of a post you need. This shows uh, how you can attach the link cube in different ways. If you're gonna do a double decker where you have two devices on one post, you'll want to attach in, in this way, the one shown in square two there. And then this is how you attach the post. You release the link lever, you put the post up from below, and then you shut the link lever. If this is how you want it set up, then you'll wanna really tighten those bolts down so it's a nice secure attachment once you've got that together. In terms of uh, the next step would be preparing the device or tray. And uh, basically, again, you need to get something on your device um, that the quick release plate can attach to or that the quick connect receiver can attach to. You see these trays have the quick release plate on them. And then these are two um, accessories. One is called the rotator. That's great for changing an iPad from portrait to landscape or for accommodating a person's head tilt. This is called the stand 90. That accommodates those people who are lying down in bed. So you can have the device really tilt flat out, right? Um, 
you know, I think 180 degrees from the from the zero position. And then you do the attachment. Okay, the the initial setup process is that I like to to do is I unlock all lock positions. I attach the device to the mount, I move the device to the person's access position and adjust the tilt angle. And then I set the shoulder lock first, then the elbow lock, and then the closest wrist position. And then we'll go ahead and do this fine tuning process of the wrist. And then you've got a guy who's smiling. This is, again, a woman I was seeing where she, she uses her feet for everything. She uses her, her right foot for her joystick. She uses her left foot for her speech device. And they wanted her to be able to move her speech device out of the way to transfer. Who pays for it? Well, it depends. <laughs> Who recommends it? Uh, the therapist, the team, the individual themselves might pursue it. Um, resellers also have our big influencers and they can they can make the rec recommendation i mean that's part of an atp's job right is to to help a person figure out what they need to do what they want to do speech device companies uh like to sell it with um this one default mount they have called the connected or via that mount um but a lot of people say no you know i need this mount to be able to move and then they can they can um also request a mount mover so the who pays for it really depends. I'm going to give you quite a few um, instances. The insurance company will obviously need a prescription and letter of medical necessity. Uh, you guys have all dealt with this. I know, you know, it's not an easy thing. The two codes that have been used most often are E2590, which is a speech device mount code. And that has a lot of limits and caps depending on the state you live in. So um, that's not as, as friendly as, say, the mil miscellaneous wheelchair accessory code, which, which does not have those limitations. Um, you can still get denied, no doubt, but um, putting together that letter of what can a person do because they have this um, might be helpful. The government pays for it. The VAs are good at, at paying for this. The voc rehab, vocational rehab, if it helps a person work, they're all for it. Um, and schools oftentimes will buy one for a student if, if it means they can reach their educational goals. Um, but a lot of people come and pay out of pocket. Um, they, might take, they might use their wavered services funds. Uh, they might use the person's trust funds, or they might do a GoFundMe. And we've also had employers purchase it for individuals. Now I'm gonna get into just a few fun things here at the end. Um, this is uh, the Independence Drive by Evergreen Circuits. Um, they've been working closely, I know, with uh, New Motion uh, to get this out in the world. And they often use the Mount Mover because it's so easy to position uh, for a person who's using eye gaze. And um, so that can be part of the package deal from Evergreen Circuits. And for those that don't know what the Independence Drive is, basically your screen kind of shows up, like you can see what's ahead of you because of the camera on the tablet device, um, but they've got an overlay of directional arrows. And so you just look at the directional arrow in the direction in which you want to move, and then the wheelchair takes that as its input. You can make school easier. And this is, again, there are lots of things that I could have included in this presentation, but it's limited. This girl on the left, she, she can go to school from her bed or her wheelchair at home, or she can go to school. She, can, she has a wheelchair mounted system. It's got two mount movers on it. So one often home, holds the papers and one holds their speech device. Uh, but they also have sometimes a, a, another um, laptop over there that is really bringing her into the classroom. So that's great. Uh, this girl, what, what was cool about this, she has a form of muscular dystrophy and uh, Sarah loves to read. And she just would fatigue, fatigue so easily during the school, just trying to keep her, her um, posture upright in her chair. But she had this chair that tilted, but she couldn't then do the work. So now she can do 
who her work, her teachers say she's so much uh, more productive and, and she feels so much more energy, it's awesome. This is a, a young woman we met long ago. Her name is Beth Mullum and she's in the UK. And I first discovered her through this PowerPoint she did about what a great mount she had discovered. And you can see on the left, here she is when she was a little one. She's So from 2008 till now, 12 years later, she's still using it. And she's uh, she's got a dual arm. She uses it her, for her speech device, but she also has a tray and she uses that for her tablet, for eating and for um, also reading, obviously, other activities. And when I went, when I was in the UK, I visited their family and she she was in the process of just going to be taking driver's license or driver's lessons so she's driving from the right side and it is the correct side for her because she's in the UK um, but she uses a single arm there so she can access it um, while she's in the vehicle whether she's in the passenger seat or whether she's in the driver's seat here she and I are in in uh, Lisbon I think at the Isaac conference she were we were co-presenting and when she arrived, um, they had smashed up her wheelchair. So they gave her this loner chair. The nice thing uh, about the mountain mover is we, she had her mount. So we just, um, I had some spare clamps and I attached uh, the wheelchair bracket to her, her loner chair and we were able to get her set up for the conference. So that was awesome. Um, the other thing, and when I was visiting her, we went out to tea with, with her mom. And, uh, you know, she kind of puts her mount off to the side, her device there. She can still talk, but she can also eat. And the, one of the things she had put in her PowerPoint presentation that was that she loved going to a cafe where she could, um, she could get out of her wheelchair and sit in a regular chair and just pull her mount over to her and still communicate using it. I have just a few more slides and then we'll do questions. Sorry, I didn't pause for questions. Um, Ryan. Ryan was the like a spokesperson for Toby, the eye gaze device, and he tells us, he co-presented with us, and he told the audience, without a mount that he could move, he wouldn't have used a speech device because it would have impacted him so negatively. Uh, now, with the mount that he can move, he can go to bed on his own. He and his mom don't have to coordinate their schedules. When she's ready for bed, he's ready for bed. No, he gets to hang out, stay up. He's in his 20s and he's no longer dependent on others in that respect. The other cool things that he's discovered is, just like um, Beth discovered, he can transfer to the couch and pull his mount over to him and still access it from a different chair. And he also can move it for, uh, to pull up for a drink. They have a special drinking fountain at their house, or he rotates it when he wants to say something to his friend without um, having his mom here. And this little guy, again, is using that utility of, hey, I've got this chair that is serving as a floor stand, basically, and I can pull the mount over to myself and use my iPad. It's not just for speech devices. How many times do I want to say? I just want to make sure you guys know that. Okay, this fellow, this is one of my favorite stories, Jordan. He was 12 years old when he got a mountain mover. His OT figured out uh, that it would be the perfect way for him to feed himself. And when he was successful, um, he looked at his mom and he said, I'm not two anymore. Totally awesome. But people use their mounts, like this girl to the lower left, I know she uses it for a speech device, but it also enables her to uh, be in the marching band at school. This little guy, his OT Ha happened to have a mountain mover in his car and, he, and when we were trying to figure out how he could more easily use his trumpet, he ran out to the car and set him up, attached it, attaching his trumpet to the mountain mover. And these two are just using it for everyday life, right? And here's Michael again, going home from his hard day at work pulls away, brings his iPad back in position, and off he goes. This is our team, our dream team. That's our building, the Ivy Arts building. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of tenants here, it's awesome. And this is a nearby park and, and our team and our, our little dog that's always on the move. 
at Salvador building your mountain louvers. If I didn't show you enough of our stuff, just tune in to NCIS New Orleans. You might see it there. And that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>